Hey everyone, this is Josh VK2MES uh, providing an update for the Vero VRN7500 uh, app, the iOS app on the Apple platform. There are a bunch of features in this release that's about to go forward uh, that apply to Android as well. Um, however, the Android app is still in beta. It can be accessed through the Google Play Store. I'm not an Android user myself, but uh, from the people I've spoken to who have tested the app have said that all the features I'm about to show you are now available uh, or fixed in the Android app as well. So without further ado, um, the latest version of the app is going into the App Store for review today and should be released within the next day or two. It just depends on how soon Apple approve the latest version of the app. Now this app applies to all of the Vero Telecom radios. So there's the VR N7500, um, the N75, which is waiting firmware for some of these features to be able to work. There are also uh, a few other radios that aren't available in the Western market, namely the AP2, which is a lower power version of the N7500. And they have a few other radios in development as well, which is how I think I managed to get this over the line because this is going to enhance their product line going forward. I only have a basic idea about what products they have in the pipeline, so I can't give you any more information about those because I don't have it. As soon as, um, uh, as, soon as I get any information about any new products from the developers, I'll come forward with it once they give me permission to do so. I am making this video and putting this post up with permission from the app developers, uh, and they've been really they've been really good to work with through this this whole process, and I look forward to continuing to work with them ongoing. So, without any further ado, here's the app. So there are a number of fixes uh, in this app, and I'm going through my blog post as I'm creating this video, so I'm just going to read down the list of fixes and I'll show you them in the app as we go along. So the first thing is within the iOS app, object reports are now showing correctly. So here's an object that's beaconed out by my eye gate. It's VK2RKG, it's a local repeater. If we tap on it, we can now see the frequency that it operates on the tone, the automatic um, and the offset. A future feature I'm going to request from the software developers is if a repeater object is detected or a radio object is detected with a frequency and an offset, that it gives us the ability to set a channel to that um, to that setting, but that's not implemented yet. And it's that's one of those nice to haves, but right now not critically important. The second um, thing is that previously the app wasn't decoding data from an eye gate correctly. There was a misunderstanding around how data gets nested inside of the AX25 frames when they're being transmitted out from an eye gate. And as a result, any packets that were being transmitted from an eye gate, um, regardless of where they were actually coming from, were showing up in the app as being from, um, uh, being from the call sign of the eye gate. That's now no longer the case. And if we go into the members list, um, we can see that we have multiple objects here um, some of these objects are transmitted out from my eye gate. Um, the next thing is for APRS in the configuration, so we tap on the bottom left, we go into the spoked wheel. In the general settings, previously we had um, a dedicated positioning channel. Now we actually have some APRS settings here. Um, for the radio, and these specifically apply to the radio, that's why they're in the general settings tab. Specifically, the APRS channel and the APRS path. Now, the APRS channel, if you set a channel in here, this will automatically be monitored in addition to the existing single or double channels that you're monitoring on the radio. I'll talk a little bit more about that a bit later because there is a couple of caveats there. Um, so you don't actually need to put the radio into double channel mode and have it uh, and select your APRS channel for monitoring anymore. It will do it automatically if you set an APRS channel in here. We also have a configurable path. Um, as you can see at the moment, I've not, not got mine set to wide one, one, wide two, one. I believe there's a character limit in this of 20 characters. So if you want to do AR, ISS or um, SAT gate or anything like that, you can now do that through the app by setting the path in here. This path applies to messaging and positioning. 
if you have um, APRS turned on for positioning, bearing in mind the radio does support multiple digital protocols. If you don't tell it to use APRS for positioning, it will use its own default modulation method, which is not AX25. It doesn't apply to DigiP. There are still some, some issues with DigiPeating. It does now work um, uh, on the APRS channel. So if you've got a channel set in here again, DigiPeating will go out on the APRS channel. Um, okay, so I'm just checking through my list here. Okay, so the APRS channel, as I said, will be monitored in both single channel and double channel mode um, uh, in the background. So um, my eye gate is transmitting in the background. I'm in single channel mode. Messages will still be coming in. Messages work. So if we go into messages now, bottom right hand corner, we can see, and, and there's an example there. Um, uh, we can see my radio has just sent out a position, but you can also see that in single channel mode, I've been receiving data off air um, from VK2 MES5 at 145175, which is the regional APRS frequency here. Up in the top right hand corner, if you tap on members, we've now got the station list as we did before. And you can see here, I've been doing a bunch of testing with a bunch of different stations. I'm gonna show you an example message using AP spot because if I go on SMS gate, you're gonna get my phone number. So I'll go on AP spot, which is my service that I've built. Um, previously, there were some issues with acts not being sent correctly. I think this was actually due to the way the app was decoding the data from an eye gate and not realizing that the data was destined for the phone. Um, so destined for, for the user um, or for your call sign and SSID, that's since been fixed. So acts are now working. So if I send a message to AP spot, um, I'll just do usage WWFF, for example, I'll send that. I can hear the radio keying in the background. I'm watching my eye gate. We've got an act back from AP spot and we've got a uh, return message from AP spot. And we can also now see that the radio has act the message back. So acts are now working end to end. Um, so the days of sending a message to you through SMS gate and having SMS gate send you the message five times at one minute intervals because it didn't receive an act are gone. So that now, that now works. Um, there is an upgrade in the, the latest version of firmware um, that speeds up the firmware upgrades. The other notable change here is that there is now a enable pairing mode at power on um, down here. So if we enable pairing mode at power on, what that'll do is it'll force the radio to go into, go into pairing mode when the radio turns on. I've found sometimes the radio doesn't connect to the phone when I first turn it on. Uh, and in order to get it to connect to the phone, I have to put the radio into pairing mode in order for the app to pick it up and realize that it's there. If you wait a minute or two, the app will usually pick the radio up. Um, but if you've hidden the radio up underneath the dashboard and um, the phone's not recognizing it to pair to, to get under there to press the button to put it into pairing mode can be a bit of a pain. So if you enable this, um, then when the radio re has the power removed and reapplied, it'll go straight into pairing mode, which is not a bad thing. Um, so that's that. Um, as I said, DigiPD now transmits on the APRS channel. Um, the next issue, the next thing is a long tap on the frequency display now brings up a full version of the channel, a full screen version of the channel list. This is handy when, if you've got your phone mounted in a cradle and you're on the run, getting to this list via the slide out um, uh, requires multiple taps and the displays aren't that big. Um, it might not seem like they're a lot bigger, but it makes it a lot easier to, to access. Um, and again, all the radio settings and stuff are accessible through that screen as if they were previously. So how do I get this? It will be in the app store soon, but there is a catch. Once you um, download the latest version of the app and install it, you do need to upgrade the firmware on the device. Some of the features that have been released have required firmware changes, namely the dedicated APRS channel um, require firmware changes and you need to upgrade the firmware on the device. Now, if you have 
an Android device, I would strongly recommend doing this through an Android device. The reason for that is the firmware upgrade process on the existing firmware from an Apple device is really, really slow. I don't have an Android device, so I had to do mine through an Apple device, and the first firmware upgrade took nearly an hour and a half. Now, once that upgrade's done, there is a feature in this, this latest version, once that firmware upgrade is complete, that will speed up that process and will allow the firmware to upgrade in about five minutes. But the first upgrade, if you've only got an iPhone, is a bit slow. You've just got to struggle through it. Now, the app developer has assured me that once you trigger the firmware upgrade, if the screen turns off, the firmware upgrade will continue in the background. I didn't let it do that. I kept my screen active for that hour and a half while it did the upgrade. Your mileage may vary. Try it and see. So to do the firmware upgrade, um, you just tap on the slide out, tap on my device, tap on the settings icon, go down to firmware version. Now it'll say checking for updates. And I have my Wi-Fi turned off at the moment because I was trying to avoid notifications while I was running this video and it will say is up to date. So I might actually just turn, do not disturb mode on, there we go. And it will say is up to date. So if you tap on is up to date five times rapidly, it will then give you the option to upgrade to the beta firmware. As I said, the first time you do this, it will take a while. Um, and it is quite slow if you're doing it from iOS. Now, not everything's fixed. Um, Digipeding still does some strange things with the path when the radio is, is Digipeding, and that's going to be fixed in a future version, but Digipeding is now happening on the dedicated APRS channel, not the channel that you're actively um, monitoring in the app. So, you know, we've got a fair bit over the line. The old um, BSS settings um, two that are in the profile picture, the time to live and the maximum forwarding times. To enable digipeating, you select one of these in the maximum forwarding times. The time to live in the BBS routing now doesn't apply to APRS. If you want to use APRS for positioning, as previously, you need to select use APRS format and then um, the, the beaconing interval is configured here in the share location. The rest of the APRS settings are configured in the APRS settings. There is still some duplication there. There's some UI UX issues that need to be worked through, but this is a pretty significant release. Now, I do need to talk briefly about um, uh, monitoring of the APRS channel in the background. The radio doesn't have a true dual receiver in it. It only has a single receiver. So how does the radio monitor two channels at once? It scans. And this is really common with a lot of modern radios is when you have them set for a dual watch, it is a dual watch, it's not a dual receive. And what the radio is actually doing in the background is rapidly switching between the two channels, looking for activity. And on the first channel that it hears activity on, it will lock on that channel, wait until the transmission ends and then continue scanning. Now, in double channel mode, that appears to work quite well, um, or single channel mode with an APRS channel set, it's only monitoring two channels, so that does work quite well. Um, the problem exists because it's scanning, if it's not listening to the APRS channel, when an APRS data frame comes in and it just misses the start of the preamble of the message, sometimes packets might be missed. Um, Unfortunately, that's just a side effect of, of how the radio monitors multiple channels. There's really no way around it. Um, it is what it is. The radio can only switch between the two channels so fast. So in single channel mode, if you have an APRS channel set, the radio is effectively scanning two channels at once. It's set it scanning your single channel and your APRS channel. In double channel mode, the radio is effectively scanning three channels at once. Now, where I've seen APRS frames missed, I've never seen an APRS frame get missed when it's in single channel mode with an APRS channel set, so scanning two channels. I have seen it miss APRS frames when you're in double channel mode and you have an APRS channel set, I, uh, ergo, it's monitoring three channels at once. 
This may not be important to you. It may be important to you. It's a trade-off. There's not a lot that the manufacturer can do about it because there's only one receiver in the radio. Generally, I'm not monitoring more than one voice frequency at once anyway. So for me, it's not a problem. I just run the radio in single channel mode with the APRS channel set and I get the full feature. It is a caveat. You do need to know about it. It's not a bug. Don't pester the developer about it because there's nothing they can do. The radio only has one receiver in it. So, um, as I said, this will be hitting the App Store in the next day or two, um, and it will be available to users. Uh, it won't be available, the new features won't be available on the N75 platform yet. However, I have it on good advice from the software developers that they're working on a new firmware release for the N75. It is already available in the Android App Store under the beta section. You will need to upgrade the firmware to the beta firmware on the radio. The manufacturer wants to do a little bit more testing on the firmware before they release the firmware for general release. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna be continuing to work with the software developers on some additional features. I'd really like to see the digipeating path issues get fixed properly because at the moment digipeating kind of breaks the packets when it, when it digipeats them. Uh, in addition to that, I would really like to see smart beaconing. And there are a few other UI UX issues. Um, just for example, I think all of these share location and, and BBS routing and ID signaling stuff that's in here under the user settings, I think these could probably be in the radio settings. But I'll pass that feedback back to the app developers and we'll see what they say. Just so that everything's in, in one spot, right? At the moment, there are a few things in different places in the app and it can all get a bit confusing. It would be good if that was, was all tied in via one screen. If you know about it, it's not a problem, but for new users, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, there are a few other issues, as a, a few things I would like to see um, in the app, such as having the ability to, to automatically set the radio's frequency based on um, uh, an object that has the correctly formatted data in it, uh, and, and a few other little things. Like it would be nice if um, in here, um, the we didn't have the AP spot colon or the VK2 MES9 colon in the message stream. Um, again, it's just, a, or, or, the, or see the act numbers on the ends of the messages there. Again, these are just these are just UI UX issues. So, anyway, look, I, I hope that this is going to help people. Um, I've I've spent a lot of time with the software developers, going back and forth and doing testing, and um, I think we've made some really really fantastic um, feature ads, value ads, and I think this now makes this radio a viable, like a really rock solid viable APRS platform. And I can't wait to see what the manufacturer does in the future. I know they have a couple of other products in the works. Um, again, I haven't been given permission to talk about those. So when the manufacturer comes forward with that information, um, then, uh, then then I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can get a preview of some of that stuff that I can give to you guys, but we'll see what happens with the manufacturer there. Um, so yeah, please. If you're an Android developer, I can't. I haven't been able to test any of these features. Um, I've had reports from Android users uh, that these features do work. There was an issue with some alphanumeric acts not working properly. That was fixed last night. Um, please download the beta, upgrade the firmware, test it, break it. Tell me what's working, tell me what's not. Um, Try and keep it within the scope of the stuff that I've talked about here as, as the new features. If there are pre-existing bugs, please do let me know and I'll make sure that I've got them on my list of things. I also have a wish list. I know a lot of users want to see the network functionality in the iOS app, so that may be coming soon. Anyway, look, thanks for listening. I know this has been a long one. Um, yeah, actually, this is Josh, VK2. MES, really happy with uh, my N7500 radio. Um, when I first bought it and when I first did my first review, I was really unimpressed with the platform. But I've got to say, um, now that I've had some time to work with the developers, I think this is going to be a really cool thing. So, yeah. Anyway, 7.3, this is Josh VK2 MES. <laughs>